HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, co-director of the HCA, Kelly Grill, gave us an update on what's happening at the Center for the Arts. We have the latest Hiller hockey and basketball highlights. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, the special town election is coming up on Monday, February 3rd, and the ballot machines were recently tested. The ballot machines were tested Friday morning at Hopkinton Town Hall in preparation for the special town election on Monday, February 3rd. Hi, this is uh, the machine test for the upcoming special town election. We are going to have three ballot questions going on. Uh, they're all going to be Prop 2.5 exemption questions. So right here we're just doing the machine test and that's just making sure that all the machines are reading everything properly. We create a uh, a stack of test ballots that we already have a tally sheet verifying what the values are. So that whenever we print out the receipt for the test, it should come out equaling that. And it just verifies that everything is all set and ready for election day. Everything gets sealed up right after, so it's all zeroed out and ready to go. And how are the machine tests going so far? Today? So far, they have been going smoothly. We haven't had a single hiccup when it comes to the numbers all adding up. Uh, so I, it's been, so far, what I would refer to as a very successful test. February 3rd, it'll be polls open at 7 o'clock, and the polls are open until 8. So come on down, cast your ballot, and if you can't make it, then absentees are available at the town clerk's office. And then just re-zero it. Okay. Okay. Just re-zero it? All set, yep. A whole lot is happening at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Here is HCA co-director Kelly Grill to update you on all the happenings. This Saturday, we have our faculty concert called Beatles to Bach, which is several of our private lesson uh, faculty um, are going to be performing in a concert to support our student scholarship fund. So that's happening at seven o'clock on Saturday night. Um, and uh, it's a great opportunity to see uh, your favorite teachers uh, doing what they do best and performing and also support a great cause. Uh, and then the following weekend, Enter Stage Left Theater is performing The Wizard of Oz. That's happening at Hopkinton Middle School on Friday, uh, two shows on Saturday and Sunday. And we have over 90 students participating in two full casts of The Wizard of Oz. So it's sure to be a lot of fun. just went up and it's open. Our gallery hours are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day. We hope that you'll come on in and take a look at it. These are uh, three artists who worked collectively on a show that is called Eviction, Destruction, and Renewal. It's really interesting work that they have. Um, their work really complements each other. Um, this show is going to be up for over a month and a half and then we'll have an artist talk um, and reception on February 21st so you can come and hear what inspired them and um, uh, with their work and how uh, they felt like it just sort of naturally, organically worked together. We just started our winter session. It's not too late to join. There's something for everyone. We have from little music classes for little ones through to adult classes in the visual arts and ceramic, and we have a new acting program for adults. Um, 
being taught by our own Jerry Shea, who is a professional actor, lives here in town. We have um, music classes and uh, theater and music and a string of uh, visual arts classes that are happening at now. And we also put up our summer classes, but you're not ready to think about summer. It's been kind of feeling warm in the last couple of days. So uh, for those parents that need to secure summer camps, they are available to register online now. A brand new uh, program that we're starting is a youth chorus um, going to be led by Monica Spencer who is uh, one of our voice instructors and also a sub music teacher and has been for over 20 years uh, in the Hopkinton and Bellingham school systems and so this is for children in uh, grades four through eight right now who are interested in singing and it's going to be a, a performance um, choral group and that's going to be starting up in the beginning of March so we hope people will come and check that out. Now one other thing that's happening, uh, programs happening for adults, is uh, an amazing band, JP and Friends, who has played here at different concerts and played at one of our galas. They are a fantastic cover band, dance band. That's coming on January 31st. And uh, those uh, tickets are available now uh, to come down and just enjoy a great night out with uh, friends right here in the neighborhood and just some really, really, really great dance music. Coming up next, the latest Hiller Sports Update and the Growth Study Committee hosted a public forum, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller Hockey remains undefeated and recently had a couple big TVL matchups. Here's a look at the latest. This past Saturday, the undefeated 8-0 Hillers welcomed in Dover Sherborne. The Hillers struck for two goals in the first period. Now with possession, that's Manser. Sends it forward. And here comes Mara. Mara on a break. Look out. Sends it over. Shot. Turned away by Subelis. Secondary shot. That's in! The inch correct with a nice follow up. Just what a great play from the Hillers end all the way up. Great passing all the way up and great follow up. And the inch correct went right to the net and picked up that rebound. Hamblett it's back to Jarrett. Now Hamblett once again with the shot and a goal! The wrister! Tommy Hamblett! Real smart play. He kind of looked it off. He tried to sold the pass to the middle and then he just snapped it off. Caught him leaning for that pass. It was a 2-1 game heading into the second, but the Hillers rallied for four more goals in the period. And Kirk in there, here's Mara with a shot and it's in! What a goal by the freshman! You keep talking about it, Tom, the face-offs for these Hillers are key. They win the face-off on that set play, and Mara moves right to the center using the screen, puts it right in the corner. The goal comes 46 seconds into the second period. Our play, there's a wrister. Out in front of the net now, trying to sneak it in, and it's in, Tommy Hamlet! 4-1 Hillers! That's another snipe shot for Hamlet. The Hillers are really picking the corners now. Weinstock sends it back to Kirk. And there's a shot out in front, and a goal! And that's going to be Jake Weinstock on the secondary attempt. Great play there. The Hillers just send that off wing, or who's or center, who's ever in front there goes right to the net and they're able to pick up those rebounds and be in perfect position to score. Now wide to the left goes Gilbert. Jammed up along the near side now, Walsh able to pluck it out. Sends it forward and that's it! Off the stick of Rogers and in! What a great tip by Rogers. Just redirected that 
perfectly. Tremendous goal there. What a breakout by Walsh. He kind of changed speeds there in the zone and caught Tova Sherman sleeping and was able to put the Jets on to blow by him. I don't even think Rogers had to move his stick on that. Yeah. Six to one Hillers heading into the third and Hopkinton added a couple more. Henry Hamlet. Over the circle, there's a shot and that's in! Sean Wall saw the opening and exploited it. It's 7-1 Hillers. That's, that's fear four, that's what you want to do. You want to skate out of the corner and use that defenseman as a screen. And Walsh just brought it perfectly to the slot. On the short side, right through the defense's legs and the goalies. Score another goal before the Hillers do it. Here comes Mara. Mara with a shot! Wow! The power! The Hillers took the game 8-1 and improved to 9-0. and This past Wednesday, the Hillers met up with 8-2 and Holliston at Loring Arena in Framingham. The Hillers didn't waste any time striking for two goals in the first period. And trying to break away with it is Walsh looking for a shot backhander. Oh. And it's in! How about that? Halston might have been on the power play, but Sean Walsh doesn't care. A backhander makes it one nothing Hillers. And he, he was able to utilize his speed, and he caught the, I uh, didn't see who the defenseman was, but he caught him kind of sleeping, and didn't think he was going to catch him that fast. And Walsh able to get the puck, spin around with a great move right between the legs of the goaltender. The goal comes with 9.02 left to go in the first period. Side Hamblin, sends it over, Walsh. Passes back and forth with Gilbert. Here's a one-timer by Mara, and it's in! Nice tip by Hamlin in front. Mara got the initial shot on it, and then Hamlet with the tip, and it's 2-0 Hillers. Hopkinton would add another goal in the second and keep Holliston scoreless with some great defensive play and goaltending. In the left, Rogers picks it up. Over to Walsh in the slot. And he was trying to get the shot off. There was defenders all over the place, and then Rogers puts it in. Kyle Rogers saw the open opportunity and flipped it right up into the net. Great pass by Walsh behind the back. He was able to keep that puck in. He knew Rogers was out front and just laid it right out to him. Rogers had nothing but net to shoot at. After Holliston added a goal in the third, Sean Walsh did not waste any time striking back. Here comes Heffernan. Walsh steals it away on a quick break. Here comes Sean Walsh, look out. There he comes, shot, goal, Sean Walsh! Third shorthanded goal of the night for the Hillers. Unreal. What a steal, what a drive up the ice, and what a shot by Sean Walsh. Hopkinton took the game four to two and officially clinched a playoff spot, improving to 10 and 0 on this season. Hiller Boys Basketball had a couple home games this week. Here's a look at what happened. This past Tuesday, 6-1 Hiller's Boys Basketball hosted 5-3 Norwood. Steven Maffiori knocked down a pair of threes in the first quarter. Gonna try to work it up the far side, stolen away by Amber Sony to Maffiori up for a three, got oh, it! That's a backbreaker right there. And Norwood able to keep possession over to the corner, up for three, and a miss by Connors. Here comes Finfrock. Over to Maffiori, up for three. Oh, he's Count it. it. I think there's a timeout coming here. The Hillers outscored Norwood in the opening quarter, 16 to six. In the second quarter, Josh Sarapusco dominated the low post, knocking down five field goals in the quarter. Cooper driving down to the corner. There. Finfrock wanted to take the three, but the defender was quick to get there. Ambersoni, nice feed of Sarapusco up and in he goes. Good ball movement, good patience, nice ball fake, and then he hit the shot. Up with the left hand off the glass and in, Sarah Pusco. Nice response by the Hillers. He's trying to get it into Leach, Ambersoni read it nicely, up to Sarah Pusco, up and in with ease. Josh Sarah Pusco, the junior, feeling it from the low post, and the Hillers have a 15-point lead. The feed out, and now driving in Keefe, up for the shot, no, Rankatori. it is collected by Rankatori. The put back, no, another put back, count it! And guess who it was, Josh Sarapusco once again. 
The Hillers outscored Norwood 21-14 and led 37-20 at the half. In the third quarter, Elon Rosen knocked down a pair of field goals. Way lead for the Hillers. Here's my math skills for you. <laughs> Finfrock feeds it over. Rosen oh, yeah. up and in. Count it. No answer for that. I mean. There were also five other scorers in the quarter for the Hillers. Hopkinton outscored Norwood 18-7 and led 52-27 heading into the fourth. The backups got into the game in the fourth, and Ned Dean took over, knocking down three field goals. Score situation, uh, he's looking to the ref to, uh, for a foul. but Around the horn to the corner, oh. up and in, oh. Ned Dean from three-point land. They've already earned the win, but getting the backups some good experience out there. Here's a three opportunity, oh. and Ned Dean hits. The Hillers took the game 68-44 to and improved to 7-1. and On Wednesday, the Hillers hosted battle-tested Shepherd Hill. Mafiori. Nice shot, tough shot. Shepherd Hill led the defensive affair 12-9 heading into the second. In the second quarter, the Hillers offense woke up and took a 23-22 lead into the half. Mafiori over to Cooper, wide open. That's a big hoop right there. Matt Cooper getting the start. Throughout the second half, both teams went back and forth. It was a 41-41 game heading into the fourth quarter. Ellis Spa wide open. Nice shot by the senior guard. That's a big hoop. Gives the Hillers a two-point lead on that play. Oh, nice move by 42. Iverson Ramirez Ruggles. It was a close and competitive fourth quarter, but Shepherd Hill hung on for the 60-55 win. The Hillers boys are now 7-2 and two on the season. The Hopkinton Growth Study Committee recently hosted their second public forum. Here's a look. The Hopkinton Growth Study Committee hosted their second public forum at the Hopkinton Senior Center. Chuck Joseph started off by sharing some of the statistics of growth in Hopkinton. Uh, education budget, how much of the budget? We had 49 million out of 90. People say, oh my God, we're out of control. You look at the other towns around us and you can see their percentage of their budget. 55, 51, 59, 58, 55, 69. So we are not out of the norm. In 1990, we were a town with an enormous amount of open land. We were not built. We were like the last town out you know, when I coached at the high school and we were in the Tri-Valley League, they used to call us the farm stand. You know, we were out in the farm stand because the other towns closer in had all developed chronologically a little bit earlier. Medfield, Westwood, Holliston, they all developed earlier. And then the growth got out to 495 and between 90 and now is when we've experienced our most significant <coughs> growth. And that growth has gone from about Seven, eight thousand to about eighteen. You can see the percentages in '95. Between that five years, it went up seventeen percent. Our big building was between '90 and 2000, when we increased by 35 percent, and then it's been fairly consistent, but a lot slower since 2000. The population change at that period. You can see that there's this, the increase over the previous period is in red, and then the percentages are in the in the blue, and that kind of mirrors. The, the whole growth, you can see that it's been very gradual but very consistent. The number of residential building permits. This is really interesting to me, to most other people, they don't care about this chart. Um, so I'll just kind of point out a couple of things about it that you should be aware of. The green bars represent single family homes, number of permits that are for single family homes. And you can see between 90 and kind of 2003 is when we did most of our single family home development. Uh, from there, you go to the orange charts and you start to see condominiums start coming in. All right, and that began, I don't know, back in 86 when we did Indian Brook and we started doing some other things from there. But then from 2013 on, you see that the green bar is very small. There aren't that many single family homes being built, but you have Legacy Farms, which is the orange, which is all the condominiums. 
So the blue, you see two big blue spikes there, one spread out over two years and one in 2016. Those are the apartment complexes that were built in town. In 2012 and 13, those are the apartments at Legacy. And then in 2016, those are the Madeira apartments down behind 110 Grill. The participants then divided up into groups for discussion about their thoughts for what the town needs. So um, the forum today was about the Growth Study Committee has been meeting since the summer of 2019. And we've been trying to just gather a lot of data to get a starting point of what the growth has been, um, how do we compare to other towns, um, what was, what's the history of the growth and where are we you know, what's the expected growth. And we want to share the data that we've learned with the residents and get their feedback. And then we're going to go back and do more work and hopefully make some recommendations to the town, um, yeah, to the town and the planning board. And we're not really ready to make the recommendations yet, but uh, let's see, but we've been working on that. Um, and we're, we want to, we want to take the feedback back and um, we probably will continue working for another couple of years because it's, it's a lot of work to do and it's hard to get consensus. So, Anyway, we have a lot of work to do, but we appreciate everyone's feedback. Please feel free to email us or visit the website. Our presentation will be on HCAM and as well, um, let's see, it'll be on the website too if you want to view it at home when you have time. After the group discussion, some idea sharing took place. And, uh, one big question is, uh, not necessarily providing housing per se, but how can we help seniors stay in their houses? For more information on the Hopkinton Growth Committee, you can visit the town's website at hopkintonma.gov and also be on the lookout for the full public forum airing on HCAM. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello Hopkinton, Matt Clark here to bring you everything happening this week on HCAM. So sit back and get ready for this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, January 17th at 5 p.m., local poets and musicians gather to share their work on a new open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Medway Mustangs, live on HCAM Ed. On Tuesday, January 21st at 6 p.m., the select board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. At 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Hollison Panthers, live on HCAM Ed. And finally, at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on YouTube. And on Wednesday, January 22nd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Somerville Highlanders, live on HCAM Ed. And on Thursday, January 23rd at 7 p.m., Margie Wigan takes a look at the local wildlife of the Wasika Wildlife Sanctuary on a new episode of What's Out There. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers ice hockey vs. Ashland and the swimming vs. Norton meet will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news.hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. This past Saturday, the undefeated 8-0 Hillers welcomed in Dover-Sherborne 
The Hillers struck for two goals in the first period. Now with possession, that's Manser. Sends it forward. And here comes Mara. Mara on a break. Look out. Sends it over. Shot. Turned away by Subelis. Secondary shot. That's in. The inch correct with a nice follow up. Just what a great play from the Hillers end all the way up. Great passing all the way up. And great follow up. And the inch correct went right to the net. Picked up that rebound. Hamlet. It's back to Jarrett. Now Hamlet once again with the shot and a goal! The wrister! Tommy Hamlet! Real smart play. He kind of looked it off. He tried to sold the pass to the middle and then he just snapped it off. Caught him leaning for that pass. It was a two to one game heading into the second, but the Hillers rallied for four more goals in the period. And Kirk in there. Here's Mara with a shot and it's in! What a goal by the freshman! Keep talking about it, Tom. The face-offs for these Hillers are key. They win the face-off on that set play, and Mira moves right to the center using the screen, puts it right in the corner. The roll comes 46 seconds into the second period. Our play, there's a wrister. Out in front of the net now, trying to sneak it in, and it's in! Tommy Hamlet! 4-1 Hillers! It's another snipe shot for Hamlet. The Hillers are really picking the corners now. Redstock sends it back to Kirk. And there's a shot out in front, and a goal! And that's going to be Jake Weinstock on the secondary attempt. Great play there. The Hillers just send that off wing, or center, set, or whatever front that goes right to the net, and they're able to pick up those rebounds be in perfect position to score. Now wide to the left goes Gilbert. Jammed up along the near side now. Walsh able to pluck it out. Sends it forward, and that's it! Off the stick of Rogers and in! What a great tip by Rogers. Just redirected that. Perfectly. Tremendous goal there. What a breakout by Walsh. He kind of changed speeds there in the zone and caught over Sherman sleep and was able to put the Jets on to blow by him. I don't even think Rogers had to move his stick on that. Tip. <laughs> Six to one Hillers heading into the third, and Hopkinton added a couple more. Henry Hamlet. Over the circle, there's a shot and that's in! Sean Walsh saw the opening and exploited it, it's 7-1 Hillers. That's, that's fear four, that's what you want to do. You want to skate out of the corner and use that defenseman as a screen, and Walsh just brought it perfectly to the slot. Short side, right through the defense's legs and the goalies. Score another goal before the Hillers do. Here comes Mara. Mara with a shot! Wow! The power! The Hillers took the game 8-1 and improved to 9-0. This past Wednesday, the Hillers met up with 8-2 Holliston at Loring Arena in Framingham. The Hillers didn't waste any time striking for two goals in the first period. And trying to break away with it is Walsh looking for a shot backhander. Oh. And it's in! How about that? Holliston might have been on the power play, but Sean Walsh doesn't care. A backhander makes it one nothing Hillers. And he, he was able to utilize his speed, and he caught the, I uh, didn't see who the defenseman was, but he caught him kind of sleeping, and didn't think he was going to catch him that fast. And Walsh able to get the puck spin around with a great move right between the legs of the goaltender. The goal comes with 9.02 left to go in the first period.